Good morning. There is some breaking news in the hunt for Declan Rice. Manchester City have pulled out of the race. They will not be matching Arsenal's £105 million pound bid. Uh, they will not match it. They will not surpass it. So it looks like it is over to Arsenal to finalise and get this deal across the line. Matisse. Mm. Wow. Huge moment for Arsenal, isn't it? Huge. I, I was reporting on it last night and I couldn't believe the bid. Like £100 million fixed fee plus the five million add-ons which which was reported and i was like this is very on arsenal mm. usually this is a man united maybe a chelsea kind of thing to do but arsenal they tend to be a little bit more you know penny pinching be a little bit more coy with their money this time they've just gone completely for it which just goes to show how much arteta really wants to play mm. well you would argue that they had tried to do the incremental bids yeah um and it's only really kind of stepped up again since manchester city kind of put themselves in the conversation yeah do you think there's anything going on behind the scenes with that there was there was a video that surfaced um, online about about this on, on TalkSport and they were talking about, you know, how maybe Pep has kind of been kind of told by Arteta to kind of go in there just to ruffle a few feathers. And then obviously now Arsenal as a board and Edu will be more aggressive and will try to outbid them. Never know. You never know. But listen, I, I couldn't make sense of why Manchester City wanted Declan Rice for that fee as much as why Arsenal want Declan mm. Rice for that fee. You can see Arsenal are maybe trying to upgrade or, or replace Party. He could be on his way to Saudi um, and they're looking to you know bring leadership into their team. A captain who's just won the Conference League with West Ham. It's very much fits the mould of what Arteta would want in a player. Um, and, and they've lost a couple of midfielders, Xhaka as well. Whereas Manchester City, they have Rodri, they have Calvin Phillips, who's not going anywhere. Um, Stones has started to play that midfield role as well. So I wasn't as understanding as to why Man City needed to spend this volume of money on Declan Rice, even though he's a very good player. Um, and then Jacob Steinberg came out yesterday night and he was like, Actually, it's not done yet because even though Arsenal have offered this, the payment terms are not exactly what West Ham want it to be. And I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I was like, really? This is just so, a soap opera. Tell me more about the payment terms then. What is the stumbling blocks on that? Well, Fabrizio and, and Ornstein reported that it was a 100 million fixed fee. And as soon as I heard 100 million fixed fee plus 5 million add-ons, I said, this deal's done. There's no way West Ham need to haggle anymore. They know West Ham, they know, they know Declan Rice wants to go to Arsenal. Personal terms already agreed. And they wanted 100 million every single year for the last few years. And they're getting that now. So what's the problem? And then he comes out from The Guardian and reports, in fact, no, that the payment terms and are not what what West Ham want um, and that there needs to be a little bit more of a discussion of it so it's conflicting reports a little bit contrasting but I think Arsenal will get the deal done regardless now they're clearly ready to put 105 million commitment into the deal how it's paid and how it's you know if it's year one year two payments etc it's a big deal um, we all remember Nicolas Pepe at the installments there yes, so they're committed to the deal now that I think they'll get it done soon. Yeah, especially when we're so early on in the transfer window. This is the type of business that Arsenal fans will want to be seeing, especially proactive business as well. Yeah. Um, of course, there will potentially be some outgoings. Granite Xhaka, as we mentioned, Thomas Partey as well. There's links to him to either be at Juventus or mm -hmm. potentially go to Saudi. Yeah. Um, obviously, that's quite a, a big change for the Arsenal midfield. Yeah. Um, you know, Thomas Partey has been brilliant, but obviously injury prone. So bringing someone in with, with Declan Rice's kind of stature and quality and at his age as well this basically gives them that leadership and that midfield for the next five Decade. ten years yeah. yeah yeah literally and the thing is with Declan Rice is he's a, he's a brilliant player great switcher of play with both feet he's added goals to his game he's he's played as a box-to-box -box next to Suchek sitting he's played as a sitter which people will forget with Suchek going box-to-box -box scoring headers so he can do both roles now he's shown that in the in the double pivot for West Ham and he even played centre back in the academy. So not saying that you would play him there, if, but if you absolutely had to, you know, if you were parking the bus late on, he's a player that knows how to defend and knows how to dig in. So it's a very smart sign, and I think from Arsenal to sign a player this calibre. And I think to, to commit this amount of money on top of Kai Havertz, which is 65 million, on top of Timber, that's mm. basically 200 million spent outright, which is what Arsenal fans wanted from this board to back Arteta after the season they've had. And that's without really any major sales, any major money coming in. So maybe that is their budget, 200, 250 million. Maybe we might start to see some sales now, but I don't think the depths of their squad in terms of holding really command much money. So they were always going to have to be ambitious and sell um, and, and, and buy big um, and, and not really worry too much about the sales. Mm. Well, this is a club but record uh, bid and fee which they will pay uh, for Declan Rice should this all go ahead. Mm. You just mentioned obviously the likes of Kai Havertz, Jurian Timber potentially also coming in. Mm. Um, how much do you think Rice and those other two potential signings <laughs> affect I, them? I think the collapse that we saw when Saliba got injured 
Um, and obviously Tommy Asu, which doesn't really get mentioned as much, but Tommy Asu was injured, so it didn't allow them to maybe move Ben White into centre back instead of holding and bring Tommy Asu in. Timber just completely reaffirms that side now. There's no depth issue whatsoever over there. Tommy Asu is a good player to come in when needed. He's even showed that when he's coming at left back if he needed to do a defensive job. Ben White was probably one of the best performing right backs last season and Saliba's shown in his first season what he's capable of. So you add in Timber to that, who's a very good ball playing defender again. Um, maybe his height might be a bit of a weakness. I'll be interested to see how he's targeted in the air. But in terms of on the ground defending and, and on the ball, he's very, very good. Um, so that side's completely depth-wise sorted. Now, and Kai Havertz for me, He's he's one of those players that kind of turns it on when he wants to. He's he's a moments player at the moment from what I've seen. So I don't think that's as good value for money from Arsenal um, to replace Xhaka with him. Now obviously he's he's a better player going forward than Xhaka. Um, is he gonna is he gonna be a needle mover for Arsenal? I don't think so personally. But it's a different system. It's a different manager. Different environment. Different position. Not playing up front. Most likely playing the Xhaka role. Maybe he'll be maybe he'll be what he was expected to be when he moved from Bayer Leverkusen. Mm. Um, there was just something that was tweeted a while ago from at AFC Stuff. Uh, they said in a meeting held at Mikel Arteta's house, the Arsenal manager personally conveyed to Declan Rice how he envisions the players' integration into the team. Throughout the discussions, he's become evident that Rice's desire has always been to continue his career in London. Now, mm. we, we did speak about this on uh, on another show the other day on, on this channel um, yeah. about the London pool with other clubs. Yeah. Um, someone like Kai Havertz, keen to stay in London, Declan Rice, keen to stay in London. Um, if Manchester City had been on the table, mm. what do you think Declan Rice would have done? I, I think his preference, slight preference, was always Arsenal to stay in London, um, which is what I've also been saying for, for many weeks now. But, but if Guardiola does call you and Arsenal's offer is not substantial substantial enough, then you go to Manchester City. I think he would have gone to Man City um, no problem with Pep and worked under the best coach in the world if Arsenal couldn't match the bid. So it's it's not like a Madrid situation where he really was desperately like trying to go to Arsenal and trying to almost do the deal himself and then he goes to Chelsea. But I think Declan Rice was, was slight preference Arsenal and then... Man City if, if, if needs be but what a fantastic alternative to have you're going yeah. to the Premier League Champions Champions League winners so yeah. yeah absolutely I mean he's you know this is a great signing for Arsenal mm. this is a future legend you could say probably potentially this is a future club captain potentially um, obviously Thomas Odegaard is the current club captain but you yeah. can see the type of you know ambition and, and leadership that Declan Rice has mm. um, Manchester City we spoke about it at the beginning of the show um, you said that you're not entirely sure where Rice would have fitted in or why they would have paid so much money for, for that type of player yeah. um, obviously Ilkay Gundogan is, is now left yeah. um, Kovacic has come in um, but what do you reckon City need in order to strengthen because the best teams even though when you're at the top they mm. always add one or two players we saw it for years with Manchester United yeah. um, so what do they need to do to make sure that they maintain that because Arsenal seemingly will come back with another push this year I think if you're signing cover for me that's one of your deep midfielders he's he's press resistant he's good in the first phase he's not a goal scorer like Gundogan he's not a player that's in the final third particularly particularly productive or efficient. He has improved at times his, his game in terms of passing, but it's, it's, it's glimpses. So for me, Kov Kovacic is, is another player to play alongside Rodri instead of Stones in a different way, maybe, but a sim similar position. If you're going to, you know, start utilising Foden now, for me, this is the time. You know, have Foden be one of your key eights in that attacking midfield central role and go and get yourself another winger to compete with Grealish on the left. If you keep Bernardo, then you have Bernardo and Mahrez again next season. If one of them leave, which most likely maybe one will, then you need a right winger. Maybe just go and get a winger that can play both sides. So for me, a winger is is, is probably what Manchester City should be looking at. Um, and yeah, for me, they have the striker situation, no problem, Alvarez <laughs> and Haaland sorted. So they don't really need to do much, but they have um, Vardy or they're looking at as well to replace probably Laporte at left side centre back with Ake. The rest of the defence is sorted if Walker stays as well. There's no, no issues there. So I think Man City is just a couple of tweaks. But I, I would I think a, a winger for me is more logical than, than 105 million on Rice plus getting cover as well. However, you never know what Pep's cooking. This guy, he, <laughs> he might be playing four people in midfield next season. Um, you, you just never know. He's always got a new system up his sleeve. So... I'm not going to tell Pep what, he's need, what he needs. No, definitely. It's, it's, it's not our remit. Um, and finally, just before we wrap up, uh, Arsenal, anything else you think they need, to, they need to add to their squad other than the three potentials? I think another, I think another a striker, potentially. 
It depends on where you're playing Trossard. I think Trossard's shown that he plays Jesus' role really well, drops deep, links up the play. He's also shown he's a really good um, crosser of the ball, can assist, um, getting player of the month as well. I think it was in April. So maybe he could play off the left with, with Martinelli. Whatever position Trossard isn't playing, I would say that's the position he needs to go for, whether it's a wing um, or up front. I think their depth out wide is, is probably a little bit a little bit questionable, depending on if Trossard's playing left or, or up front. So I'd say a striker or a left winger. I think Nelson's not on a new deal. Saka on that right wing was kind of burnt out last season as well. Um, depends if you're playing Nelson off the right or the left. So one of those forward three positions, depending on where those players are playing, is, is needed, I think, because there was a bit of a burnout for, for some. Mm. OK, well, keep it locked in with us here on DR Sports for all your latest and greatest <laughs> transfer breaking <laughs> news. Declan, like Rice. <laughs> Declan Rice, he should be coming to Arsenal. Mm.